a lot of people I see, a lot of people who are sitting on stage speaking for me, they say the same thing. Conferences, you know, meetups. They're in those secret sauces game. You could listen to a thousand podcasts. It's the same thing yep. over and over again. Pick up a fucking book, listen to some podcasts, and show up to networking, networking events, events. And you're done. That, that right there, if you do it consistently, day in and day out and day in and day out, you will succeed in this business. There's no other way to put it. All right, today we have Eric Melnikoff. Eric is, man, there's very few people I know that have such a passionate why for being. Uh, why he wakes up in the morning. Why he's doing what he's doing right now, busting his tail. Um, it, it's, it's not about him. It's about providing for the next generation and giving kids, you know, between 19, 25-year-olds, a younger generation an opportunity to not miss out on what he missed out on, right? And it's to build passive income. It's to build generational wealth. And so, Eric, uh, man, to have someone like you on the podcast that actually cares about about the future generation, it's an honor to have you on the show, brother. Thank you so much. Honor to be here. Honor to be here. I watch <laughs> you a lot, and uh, good to be in the room. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. Eric, um... I'm not going to do a great enough job giving you the, the proper introduction. So why don't you just give the, the audience a little background on, on yourself? Yeah, well, I'm uh, 55 years old, a lot older than, uh, than I'd like to be. But, uh, <laughs> 55 years old, and uh, um, it starts out as a high school dropout, mm. you know, messing around with the wrong people, uh, you know. Drove my mother crazy for the first uh 30 years of my life. Sounds like every entrepreneur yeah. other than his son, yeah. And um, and uh, got into real estate in my early 30s. It was like my third career, my third, I sold a business. I was able to successfully exit a telecom company that I started and um, sold that business, had a year uh, between where he paid me like a no-show. And it was a good thing because you, most people don't get into real estate with the Brinks truck backing, the, you know, backing them into the parking space. You know, they're like a third thing. So, yeah, you know, that's what I did. I, I got into real estate, uh, started in Hoboken as an agent, renting apartments. <laughs> and, uh, you know, thankfully I did okay. You know, I was, uh, I was making six figures as a rental agent. So that really? was, that was enough to kind of get the ball rolling, but there was a lot of struggles after that. I remember, I remember going out to dinner with the guys in Montclair, a bunch of guys, and I'm looking at the menu cause I had $18 to my name and it was in my left pocket. You know, and the guy, one of my boys looked over at me. He's like, I got you, man. Don't worry about it. We got you. Just order whatever you want. Because he knew I was sweating over wow. the menu. And, and that was already like four years into real estate. I had a couple, like a, a low, a lull there for a minute. And uh, a couple months later, uh, we decide, my buddy and I, who I grew up with, we decide to put out bandit signs for, to buy houses. And, you know, he laid out the money because I remember I had no money. And we got a call, you know, uh, in Edgewater, a defunct um, HOA. The lady couldn't sell her house on the market. And they were buying another house. They were in contract. So she was desperate. Mm. So um, he laid out the $5,000 deposit. We offered her two twenty on a house that was worth like three, a condo that was worth like three fifty. Wow. We offered her two twenty. She took it. And I put it on Craigslist. And my now partner answered that ad it was like 15 years ago and he bought it for it was like a $32,000 assignment never closed so we took his 5,000 turned it into 32 you know a $32,000 profit nice and we did that two or three more times within like three months the bandit signs worked by the way not That's anymore cool. man no I don't <laughs> know well, it's all metal now it's there's no wood anymore it's all metal uh um uh Signposts or whatever. Yeah, we yeah. Go yeah. run out at midnight. <laughs> boom, boom, with a six foot pole. Boom, boom. You know, tap them up. We were bad, uh, badass. <laughs> uh, but it worked, and so I put like forty five thousand in my pocket in like three or four months, assigning these contracts. That was pretty cool. And that kind of got my. That was my foray into into investing. Yeah. And I and I was always I opened my own brokerage in uh in two thousand and ten, 
Uh, did that for a couple of years into, until the flood of 2012. I, I don't remember what flood that was. Wiped us out in Jersey. I think it was Sandy. Yeah, yeah. I think it was Hurricane Sandy. It was, yeah. Ah, come on, you were 14 years old. What do you remember? Uh, you know what, man? <laughs> um, 14. Whatever. So, you know, the, the so I then merged. You know, it was like that flood came. I started rebuilding. My partner was like, what are you doing, man? Just go join another brokerage. Because it was like I was the only agent in my brokerage. Everyone left. Oh, jeez. So, yeah, I had a lot of listings. We were taking like 40, 50 listings a year. I was taking them. And I'm like, you know, he's right. So I went to Keller Williams. And, and you know, again, I started flipping one or two homes a year. Never buying and holding. Hmm. My partner, who buys and holds, didn't buy his first family house. I remember he got he got married. Had three kids. I think he had his fourth kid. They were still renting. But he had like 11, 12 units. Wow. Maybe I think he has 11 buildings and, and multiple units in each building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... <clears throat> The first house he bought is his forever house. I mean, it's a big house out in the West, somewhere in Jersey with like five or six acres. I'm like, he did it right. Yeah. You know, so that's me. I, I'm, you know, I, uh, I'm the, my worst, my own worst enemy. You know? <laughs> Let me ask you something, man. That's a great story. I appreciate you being so authentic and transparent um, about the highs and lows. You know, you got into real estate. You're breaking six figures on the rental side in Hoboken. How did you end up four years later, eighteen dollars in your left pocket? Not making good moves with the money, you know. Uh, not paying my taxes. Most oh, realtors, right? No, right. I'll get you. A couple of years not paying taxes, then you're, you know, someone says to you, "Oh, you haven't been paying your taxes," you know, and the the IRS starts dunning you. You, you got to pay them, you know. So that's what really what it was. I had to pay a bunch of years of taxes. My fourth year, I had to pay the first three years of taxes. And uh, I think I was using H&R Block, so I wasn't getting good. I wasn't doing it right. They were not helping you out no. at all. <laughs> completely ignorant. I was never brought up with Damn. money principles or, you know, single parent household. Yeah. Just never, you know. So it take my lickings, you know, and, I, and that's where I was at that point. And it's... It's always the um, single family households. Like I grew up with with just a mother. You know, yep. My dad left when I was like eight years old. My mom raised me just yep. her whole life, bro. I was getting to fights. I was selling pot. I was smoking weed. I was, I was stealing. You know the yeah. the whole nine. I mean, yeah. but you don't have a father there to kick your ass. You're wilding out. Yep. And um, and so yeah, no, I I I, I empathize with with. The struggle, man. You probably had it worse because you dropped out of college. You dropped out of high, high school, school. Yeah. and, and you're, you're just figuring it out. But, um, okay, so now we fast forward, right? You go through, you, you start a business, very young age, a telecom business. Yeah. You exited that very successfully. Oh, yeah. Um, and then you get into the real estate game. Then you start, you start transitioning out of the rental business and you start doing- Listings for sales. Listings for sale. You start doing some wholesaling, some assignments, um, and you're doing a bunch of fix and flips yeah. al along that journey, right? Um, but instead of doing, you know, you, you and your partner are making the same amount of money, but instead of doing what your partner did, which was buying and holding assets for cash flow and long-term wealth, right? You were on the other side of the spectrum. I'll make that much more. I'll make significantly. I'll put 40 down. I'll make 80. And by the end of the year, would have fixed and flip, right? Um, what would you have told your younger self? Well, you know, I, I didn't know. I started late with the family, my okay. own family. So he had the family. You know, he had the wife and family at home. Yeah. I was running around having fun. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that costs. I nice. don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'd say I don't have fun, but you know, uh, settle down. Mm. You know, I wasn't focused on it. I had my first kid until I was 49. Wow. Right. You know, and, and when, when you have a kid, it kind of changes you. <sighs> you know, so I don't know. I mean, um, I, I, I would have focused more. I would have saw, and I was always uh, into, ed, like, self-based learning. Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't really focused. So that's it. Just focus more. Tell you what, man. Being single 
Ready to mingle costs a lot of money. Costs money. Oh my gosh. Costs money, you know. Listen, you... bro, I just went through a breakup. <sighs> These pockets are empty right now, man. Costs money. I see this bank account trading every month. I'm like, Lord. <laughs> it does cost money. They say the earlier they they, they did tra- they did statistics on this. They have data that shows that the earlier you get married, the wealthier the wealthier you typically are. Because you're not here to impress anybody. You don't need the rollies. You don't need the limo pulling out. You don't have to buy the table. You're just going home to a nice home-cooked meal and hanging out with wifey. The key is you got to stay married. I got married when I was 26. Oh, man. But I also got married again when I was 32. (sighs) And then I got married again. (laughs) So you got to stay married. (laughs) I told you, I'm my my own worst enemy. Listen, brother, I hear you, man. The trauma does enough. The so, trauma does some damage. So, yeah, yeah, and every time you get divorced, it costs a little money. Cheaper so, to keep her, my friend. Yeah. Cheaper, Cheaper to keep her. Cheaper to keep her. I have a 12, a 13 year. It's going to be 14. I got a 14 year old. Girl? Boy. Boy. Yeah. Good man. Good football player. Nice. We're driving home from football one night. Yeah, I go, what do you want to do when you grow up? I was, asking, I was asking that question to my niece when she was seven. She's like, um, um, eventually, she's like, Uncle, stop asking me that question <laughs> at like 18. You know? <laughs> But I asked the kid at 14, what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a football player. I go, bro, you're good at football. Everyone's cheering you on. You're in the Pete, whatever grade yeah, you're yeah, in, 14. Yeah, yeah. You know? Come on. Let's just think of a plan B just in case. <laughs> just in case you're not going to be a football player. You know, and no one can tell you not to learn how to grow your money. My buddy who, who invest, his son invested with us at 19. He's 21. He's done a couple flips with us, flips with us already. Um, he think you know, no one told him. His father didn't say, no, oh, I don't want you focusing on real estate right now. Go back to high school. I mean, he was focused on it, and he started investing at 19. So that's what I want to teach the kids, right? That's mm-hmm. teach my kids, teach your kids. I didn't think like that. I thought about partying and was I weighing out, selling the weed and, and doing that kind of shit and stupid shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, focus on learning, focus on growing. So fast forward now. You have a, you know, I, I'm, I've been hearing about your events for a while, but I think you have a massive, massive event coming up on April 2nd in Long Branch. Tuesday, April 2nd, Long Tuesday, Branch. Tuesday, April 2nd. You have some crazy heavy hitters showing up to that yeah, event. Yeah. Uh, what's the purpose of Build It Now? Why did you create and found um, Build It Now? And what is it? Build It Now. Right now. You mm-hmm. know, instead of, you know, I said I'll do it later. That's what's one of the things you could have done differently. I said I'll do it later. You know? And so um, I, I founded that so we could educate young kids to think differently. And adults, young adults who who don't think in their 20s or 30s, you know, right. who are still partying. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's to put all the knowledgeable people in the room, guys like you, who have done it, who have clearly proven the, the here's the process, and, and get the, the recipe from them, you know. So there's that. That's the live aspect. Um, get the recipe to success right there on stage, take notes, go back and do it. We have challenges to challenge the people. So four or five day challenges to say, you know, in the next 60 days, you're going to buy a property. Do you want to join our challenge? Uh, we have the junior REMBA, the real estate MBA program, where they start with finance 101. And over the course of 12 months, they'll be into the real estate and how to take down properties. You know, so there's, it's a whole platform. Community, of course, in the, you know, Facebook community. Everyone's got one, right? <laughs> um, and and you know, the idea is that we put these people into this community and, you know, they're, they're learning how to change the way they think. You know, they're fo- instead of focusing on the video games or on the, the rollies or, you know, the tarmac, you know, all the shit they see on social media, they're focusing on learning the, the, the actual plays. I love that, man. Yeah. I love that. Because, like, dude, you're clearly, like, a very savvy business person. You you built, sold a company. You're making multiple six figures, fixing and flipping. You're doing a bunch, 50 listings a year. I mean, you know how to make it. You know how to make a dollar wherever you go, no matter what, right? I'll make it. You'll make it. And now, but, like, throughout that period of time, you were just balling out. 
you were having you were having a lot of fun making mistakes along the way, and you look back fifty five years and you said, "Damn, if I if I had started ten years ago, what if I started twenty years ago, thirty thirty years ago, where would I be financially?" How much passive income could I generate to what I have right now if I just started at 20-something years old? I still have to grind every day. I have to grind every day. Right. I could take a week off, a couple weeks here and there. Uh, last year, I, 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 I worked less. Still made money. Had my team make money. A couple shifts in the team. One good guy leaves. Got to go back to work. Yes. You know? Yeah. Because I don't have passive income. Because mm. I don't own real estate. I signed one eight-unit building. I sold it. Biggest mistake I ever made. Biggest mistake. Rooming house, too. So it was a big cash, cash cow. Yeah, cash cow. In in Caldwell. So good town. Oh, no. <laughs> Dude, it's, you always look back and you're like, why the hell did I sell? Yeah. I hope I never have to sell, man. Yeah. When you syndicate, though, you have a five-year exit. You have no choice. But I look at some of these buildings that I own, and I'm like, oh, man. I wish I never took a dollar of investor capital. Can't you refinance those, take out your partners, and keep it? Yeah. In the syndication? It's just, it just gets a little convoluted because, you know, you, you, we don't have, like, a fixed return. You get, a, you get a, a preferred return on your money. Right. And then you participate on the upside. So it's kind of hard to structure. Uh, you don't want to resell it to yourself or cash out. Resell it to myself, but then I'd be buying it at premium, at a premium, and you know what? I might as well go buy something for myself. Right, got it. So, yeah, yeah. I wish I never had to sell. That's great. That that in itself is something that I've heard on this podcast time and time and time again. Do not sell. You're gonna regret it. The only time you should sell is when you have another opportunity that you could 1031 tax exchange into. Um, that's better, right? And bigger, bigger, bigger and better, bigger yep. and better in a better location. All that, right? Yeah. So. Talk to me about this 19-year-old kid. You, you mentioned him earlier. Um, he's like, you're, w w what's his story? Nico Rizzieri. <laughs> got to give him a plug. Nico's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, he's, you know, his father raised him right, man. Love that. Father raised him right, you know, and uh, God first, family, mm. and, and, and then follow your passion. So it was music with this kid and, and, uh, and money, and he loves to invest. You know, like, how could you turn a kid away? One of my inspirations, actually, one of the kids that really made me, I always wanted to do something for the kids. Always had an idea. Let's do a challenge. We'll do a national challenge. My friend's like, yeah, all right, back to work. Two years later, what happened to that challenge? I don't know, I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then Nico comes along, and, and we're doing flips, and he's like, and his father's like, I, I want, I, I want to, Nico wants to invest. What do you mean, with us? Yeah, but he wants to learn. Has he got any money? Got to have some got to pay to play you know yeah and so he did he had a couple bucks and and his father went in with him you know they did it together which is part of the mba program where you know you can't ask a 17 year old to start doing stuff you need parents approval you, get, mm -hmm. you know so you jump in with your parents so it's, it'll be a family affair um and he and he got in you know and he would come up to he's, they're down the shore they're down near long branch uh, coincidentally and so they came up like three, four times in the in the course of a four month flip, taking notes, you know, jumping on calls. Wow, a little annoying. I'm like, God, just you're you're a passive investor. <laughs> no, but he wanted to learn, right? He wanted so, and that and that's great. You yeah, know? no, you gotta let the kid know. And yeah, he, we just did our last one, and he's getting into another one. Wow, he rolled it over. He said, "Keep the money. I want to press. I want to press it. You know." So he's like, "I'll give you another ten ten thousand. Yeah, yeah. So give me my profits, keep the principal. I'm giving you another ten thousand. Wow, smart kid. Good head. Can't wait to see where he's gonna be. Yeah, he's gonna be a in monster. Ten years. Yeah, you know. Holy crap. Yeah. So, so that's like again the inspiration. Uh, it helps. It kind of it's very good contrast to what I did. Mm -hmm. The exact opposite. So I love it. You know. So so, so you got kids like Nico. He's kind of like your test dummy into this. Build it now. Yeah, REMBA program that you're developing. This community of, of kids like him, where you could give him an opportunity to learn the game, invest in deals, and start start early. Yeah, right. Um, I got a little cousin, smart kid, 19 years old. He's hungry. Yeah, he loves making money. 
And he comes to me. He's like, Dave, where do I, where do I even start? I'm like, bro, you got to finish school. I, 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 I must be giving him bad advice, right? I do say, hey, look, you got you to read this book and read this book and read this book. But, man, you know how many events I had to show up to to learn what I had to learn, yeah. to do what I'm doing right now? Bro, it was every Friday I was showing up time and time and time again, just trying to piece together little little bit titty bitty pieces of information to kind of take those fragments and make it whole. Yeah. You know how many fucking books I had to read? Hundreds of books. How yeah. many podcasts did I have to crush for it to start making some sense? sense? Yeah. I mean, or I'm talking about like self-taught thousands of hours to get to the point where I was like, oh, this is how you play the game of real estate. Same here. Right? And so this, this REMBA program is a shortcut for all of that. I'm trying to fast track it, yeah. Right. Can you kind of walk me through what a curriculum looks like? I can't. No. Um, you can't, oh. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's um, you know, first, uh, the first uh, curriculum will, will make, be made up of just basic finance. Okay. Just, you know, how to write a freaking check. Yes. Because we don't do that anymore. Not that, you know, people are going to be writing checks, but there is a thing called a checkbook. Wow. Balancing your, your finances in, you know, simple, 101, right? Um, um, once you learn that, You'll learn the basics, just the real basic language of real estate. Simple. So you'll go through those. They're short little modules. Love that. 10 to 15 minute modules. I have ADD. You know, I'm I'm getting ready to go into another self paced learning program. <laughs> and I asked the guy, the guy's selling me this twenty thousand dollar coaching thing. I go, Oh, we're going through. He shows it on the on the screen. I said, well, I see 55 minutes up there. Are these all 55-minute modules? Because I'm done. I'm out of here. Yeah. So, no, no, no. They're 15-minute modules. Okay, good. So these are all kind of, you know, one topic, 15 minutes or less. Nice. You're in, you're out, you know. And it's just going to go through each of the things that we probably took months and years to learn and got beat up and had to, you know, beg for someone to talk to us about it. Yes. Oh, my you know? gosh. And uh, that's it. And eventually it'll go through. To the point, it's also encouraging them to, you know, go get a job and, you know, if they're making 200 bucks a week part-time as a, as a teenager, to save half of it mm. for their investment. We'll create a challenge where we'll match a certain amount of money for the deposit. That's what we're going to do. No way. Not next week, but, you know, in the next year yeah. or so. Right. Have enough people in the program. Well, if, they, if they follow the prescribed program, not just go through the curriculums, but get a job. Go get part-time job making. I think today they're making 15 bucks an hour, right? Yeah. Minimum wage. Not bad. And don't go blow it on video games or clothes or whatever. Save half of it to invest in real estate when you're legally able to buy your own property. Wow. The idea is that by the time they're 18, 19 years old, they have 10, 15 grand. And, you know, with that, they might be able to do something. Hell yeah. You know, you can pull down a little piece of crap property. Yeah, you can. You know? Two, three guys with ten, fifteen thousand dollars gets a deal done. There, you double your money. Yeah, after they go through that one hundred and one, they'll go get into how to joint venture, how to raise private capital. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, it's a twelve month. It's, it's an o- it's an ongoing. It'll 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 probably progress past twelve months. It's not fully built out. Gotcha. It's not. It's in the process of being built now. So there's going to be back end stuff that we haven't done yet. That's so yeah. cool, man. You know. I um, love that you're doing this. It's fun. It's, it's for the fun. kids. It's for the kids. It's for the kids, yeah. man. No, it's that's amazing. It's we do fun. we do like this thing called Leverage Cares. Okay. Um, where th- the mission of Leverage Cares is like a nonprofit division of this company. Yep. Um, is to promote financial literacy and entrepreneurship to this to the kids in Newark. That's nice. Young kids, but it's so hard, man. I'm like sitting down. I'm trying to teach them how to budget. You know, I'm trying to teach them what debits and credits are. I'm trying. And, and um, for me, it's like, oh, dude, this stuff is so boring. I want to get to the juicy stuff, right? Like the, the, but the fundamentals of it all is what, if I didn't know the fundamentals, bro, I wouldn't have been 23 years old with 65 grand in my pocket. That allowed me to jumpstart my career in real estate. Somewhere along the line, though, you had a why. Oh, yeah, big time. You know, whatever it was. I don't know what it was, right? We all have our why. Yeah. I didn't find my why until I was in my late 30s. Mm. You know, and that's the thing. So I'm, you know, I talk to my kid. I see other kids. What do you want to do? 
Mm. Why? Do you want to do it? Why? Why do you want to, like, what do you want to do? So it's taking that why, and then, you know, again, I'm, I'm just listening to you, you know, credits, debits. Get a credit card. Why do you want to get that junk or whatever it is you want? Why do you want those sneakers? What are they going to do for you? What could you do? And I talk, talk to my six-year-old about this. I don't know if it's too young, but I'm like, <laughs> what do you want, right? Yeah. Well, I want 10,000 toys. What would it, we're now doing a thing where if you get a toy, you got to give two away because she got 10,000 toys. Wow. You got to give away. I don't give away. You don't want to give it away. You, she just wants, wants, wants. So I'm trying to just teach her, what would it feel like if you were to give somebody some, go to mm. a, a hospital and give some sick kid your toy that doesn't have it or a poor kid your toy that doesn't have it? What would that feel like? Oh, it might feel good. You want to try it? No, I'm still, I'm still not getting through. But the idea is to get through to them and say, well, if you want all those toys, I'm not buying her toys anymore. Mm. She's got some money in her piggy bank. I have a system. I'm getting off track here. No, it's all good. Go with the system. Know, it, it, a system where once she has a certain amount of money and she's got little chores, she gets points for chores, and at a certain point she'll get, I don't give allowance, you got to earn the allowance. If you don't do a chore, if I have to ask you more than twice to eat your lunch or your, your breakfast, points are coming off. No way. Yeah, yeah, it's rigid. 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 It's militant. Yeah. <laughs> and, and at the end of the week, she might get two, three bucks. And at a certain point, when she has a certain amount, she got like $150 in her piggy bank. Right. She can go out and buy her own toy if she wants something, but she can't draw that balance below like 80 bucks. Mm. There's a little system there. Just Start to if you want up. something, you know, I want her to value money. Right. Some people criticize it. Hey, it's too, just let the kid be a kid. And But I want her to value that money. Mm. And um, I got video of her getting in the car. Dad, can we go driving for dollars? No way. Yeah. I'm teaching her that shit. No way. Yeah. So that's really cool. And so she's, and she, she knows what I do for a living. She doesn't say it right. You know, something with houses. I don't even know how she says it. <laughs> she's six years old, man. It's great. She wants to go driving for dollars. You know, they say that the daughter gets the dad's braid. The son gets the mother's. Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you relate? Yeah. It's true. <laughs> Dad, mommy's mommy's boy. He's a mama's boy. Yeah, and yeah, she's yeah. daddy's little girl. Yeah. <laughs> so and so we'll see. You know, like the idea is that you have these conversations with them. The conversations I never had. My mother was out working three jobs. Wow. You know, I was home, weighing out the weed. You know. Yeah. Selling it. So you know, at the end of the day. You know, have these conversations so that they value, like, the what's on the other end. It's not just for money's sake. You know, money's only good for the money you can do or the, the impact you can make. So build like that, that build that knowledge, build that consciousness, right? So they, they're conscious of it. You spend that money on those sneakers, what are you missing? You know, what do they say? Warren Buffett still drives, like, 20 year old Cadillac or whatever. <laughs> he like, still he still he still rides like he, um, economy in the planes. No, I don't think he does anymore. But but, but he does. He, he's just you know that forty thousand dollar car, or whatever it is, yeah. isn't forty thousand because I can turn that forty thousand into three hundred thousand over the twenty years. Yeah, it's a little crazy. You know, it's a different way of thinking. So, um, real estate's probably the best asset class you could be in in order to build that generational wealth. I think it's really just kind of crazy how easy it is. Yeah. Um, I, I look, it's hard. Nothing, nothing worth having is easy. No. Uh, so when I say easy, I just want to do it with a grain of salt, but it is definitely doesn't, you don't need to be a brainiac. You could be an average Joe getting C's. You could be failing high school, middle school, elementary school. You don't have to have, Anything special about your your intelligence, but so long as you're willing to, well, first, and I and I, I don't want to just go back to what you keep saying is why. If you have a strong enough why, you have a purpose for being, then you're gonna have enough grit to get through the hard times, and the times where you don't want to sit down and read a book or go through a module or show up at a networking event or make that cold call that 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 three hundredth call that you just made for the day. If you have a why, that stuff becomes really easy. easy. Yep. And so what real estate allows you to do is if you have a big enough why and you have enough and you're able to take that why and turn it into energy, 
towards learning about the game and actually taking action. It's unfathomable for me to say that you will not you will you won't be a millionaire doing this. It's too easy in this game. It's hard to it's hard to mess up. Yeah. Uh, the, the two people come to mind as you're talking are I have a friend I grew up with. He's a plumber. A successful plumber too. Yeah. Not the brightest bulb in the batch. You know, he was in the special classes with me in high school, junior high. <laughs> you know, the short, the small classes. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we were. Um, so I, we're friends. He's got to be worth $30 million. Jeez. Owns real estate. Like, real estate that's just sitting there. He doesn't care right now. <laughs> just sitting there. It's like, yeah, I'm going to put 40 units there. All up and down Bloomfield Avenue. Wow. Montclair, Verona, Caldwell. I'm giving so much information. He'll really, you just call me not the brightest bulb in the batch. Not the brightest <laughs> bulb in the batch. He's worth, got to be worth north of $50 million. Jeez. The other guy is a guy I went to go look at his building to buy it up in Morris County. Way overpriced. Mixed use. Seven unit, uh, seven apartments and three stores. Or six and three. Guy barely speaks English. Doesn't speak much English at all. Comes from Columbia when he's 18 years old. Works as a porter in the Marstown Hospital, whatever hospitals in Marstown. Buys a two-family in Marstown at 25, married, buys a two-family house hacks before house hacking was a term, Yeah, right? And, I, and we had coffee, went to the building. I, 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 I love listening to the story. He's, he's got to be 88, 89 years old. Trying to get it. He's going to speak. He's going to speak. I just got to get a, a good translator. I'll give him like 10 minutes because his story is amazing. Gonna speak on, uh, on April second, and he, um, you know, two family, four or five years, sold it, got another two family. The only thing he didn't keep it. Eventually, he kept his two two families, and they had two or three two families, and bought this building. This building he bought like forty years ago. You could imagine, it's paid for so much. Oh my gosh! And his story is like this is not again not uh, he didn't come here with a master's degree, or he never got a master's degree. He was a porter cleaning bed sheets That's and crazy. bathrooms in the hospital. Yeah. And he owns a few million dollars in real estate. Yeah. And he's like, I'll sell this for a million, and if not, I'll just keep it and take the, you know, 120 or whatever, whatever, I don't even remember the rent roll. Right. But he's making money. So you don't have to be a genius. You just got to do the work. Yeah. I think you just have to be patient. Yes. Have grit. You mentioned the word grit. Dude, I thought by now I would be a billionaire, you know? But everything takes two times longer. Yeah. It costs two times You'll as much. You'll be there. But I'll get there yeah, one Yeah, I can see your operations. You'll be there. I appreciate it, man. You know? Um, I got to have you speak. Uh, I got to have you speak on stage. We got to get Jeremy on the, on the podcast, and I'll schmooze him up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we'll beat him up tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, I'll get him, too. We'll jump him from both sides. Um, so talk to me about the, the Build It Now conference. Who's going to be there? Uh, mm. Why should the people listening? I'm gonna be there, guys. So if you're there, we'll we'll, we'll dap up. We'll have a good time. Maybe have a drink or two. But um, yeah, um, if, why, yeah. Who's there? Why should they be there? So we have uh, investors flying in all over the country. Okay. Uh, Rod Cleef is a big, uh, uh, big multifamily. Got Rod. Guy. Rod Cleef is coming in. <laughs> um, um, who else I got? I'm getting blanks. Jeff Glover is a is a guy from um, he's actually a real estate a broker he owns a bunch of Keller Williams offices in Michigan, number one Michigan agent for the last ten years. Jeez, he owns a massive coaching company, but he also invests. He's you know quietly accumulating hundreds of properties, so he's going to speak. Uh, two kids from uh, from Washington State, Cody and Christian. Cody started three years ago when he was nineteen. When he spoke for me in June, he had 105 doors. He's speaking for me. Uh, I just him and Christian are partners. Uh, I interviewed Christian on a 15 minute teaser on our uh, building now site. They now have 225 doors. It's less than a year later. So wow. he picked up 120 doors. Good for him. So they're speaking. How old are they? Um, 23 and 27 Jeez. or 30. Maybe maybe Christian's a little bit older. 30. It's incredible. Janelle Wilson. She's a bigger pockets uh, a contributor. She owns 150 doors in Philly. Does a lot of Section 8s. Nice. Henry Washington, Bigger Pockets podcast host. Um, I think uh, uh, six years ago, the guy had a thousand bucks to his name. Couldn't be on his wife's mortgage. 
today he has over 100 doors and flips like 30 properties a year. Good for him. Yeah, so, and that's just uh, half of the group, you know. Uh, they can go to builditnowlive.com, look at the speaker list. Um, I'm pretty excited, you know. I'm going to learn. I got these, <laughs> I'm like, who do I, when I go, when I pick the menu for the lunch, yeah. I'm like, do you guys have real avocado or spread? Because I don't want the spread shit. I'm picking it for me, you know, yeah. with all due respect, you know, so at least it's going to be good. Nice. Um, and, and the investors I picked and I got to come speak are people I want to learn from. Mm. I want to build a portfolio. I don't want to have to work. I don't want to grind every day. I want to be like you. <laughs> yeah, right. You dude. know, when I grow up, I want to be just like <laughs> come you. Come on, man. You know, come so, on. yeah, um, it's going to be pretty big. And, and I think we're going to sell out this year. I think we're going to sell out. So, uh. Yeah, it's going to be fun. That's incredible. Eric, um, I think you said it a couple of times now. Uh, builditnow.com. Builditnowlive.com. Builditnowlive.com. Guys, I'll tell you what, right, right now, if it wasn't for networking events, if it wasn't for conferences, I would not have the, I would not, this business would not exist today. This is an amazing operation you have here. I'm blown away. <laughs> I really am. I'm not to turn it on you, but it's just, it's freaking amazing. I've seen it on a lot of your video. Like you, you do a lot on social. You're blowing up on social, by the way. Thanks. Dude. And I'm like, wow, guys, I see the conference room. I see the culture. So, and a lot of people I see, a lot of people who are sitting on stage speaking for me, they say the same thing. Conferences, you know, meetups. So not to cut you off, but. It ain't a secret. They're in those secret sauces game. You could listen to a thousand podcasts, and at the end, they're going to say, what's the best piece of advice you could give to a younger generation if you want to get started in real estate investing? Dude, it's the same thing yep. over and over again. Pick up a fucking book, listen to some podcasts, and show up to networking, networking events, events, and you're done. That, that right there, if you do it consistently, day in and day out and day in and day out, you will succeed in this business. There's no other way to put it. So anyway, if you guys are not there, you're listening to this podcast, you're not, you're not showing up to the Build It Now conference, you're full of it. <laughs> All right, you're full of it. You're, you're talking to it. talk, you're not walking. <laughs> right? I love it. And guess what? I'm not getting any referral fees from this plug either. So I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I yeah. think what you, the guest list that you have on the show, uh, on your, at your conference is tremendous. Um, and I'm really, really excited for Appreciate what you're building and hopefully the massive impact, even if it's a small impact, but the impact that you have on the future generation, future real estate investors, I think it's, it's tremendous, man. So God have ripple, bless you. ripple effects. It will. It will. It will. I appreciate your support. All right, brother. Thank you so much, man. It's been a real pleasure. My pleasure.